Uh, good evening. I'm Bob Davidson, and I would like to welcome you to the fifth annual Davidson Fellows Award Ceremony and Reception. The Davidson Institute for Talent Development is a nonprofit organization that recognizes and supports and provides resources to profoundly gifted young people in the United States. As co-founder of the Institute with my wife Jan, I'm very proud to be here tonight in the Library of Congress to share the accomplishments of 17 highly talented, uh, incredibly motivated, and determined young people, many of whom will one day have publications stored among the volumes in this great institution. Thank you for being here with us tonight to celebrate this fellows event and help us recognize these exceptional scholars and thinkers. I'd also like to thank the co-sponsors of tonight's reception that always come forth and come through and get us this room and otherwise support us. Um, first, our, our Senator Harry Reid from our home state in Nevada, and also Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa, who's uh, supported us all of these five years that we've had this ceremony. Uh, neither were able to be here tonight. You know, they, they have votes and committees and hearings and things like that to do, but they've each sent their congratulations to all. We have several guests here tonight that I would like to introduce. We have former Senator Richard Bryan from our state of Nevada and his wife Bonnie with us. Um, we have Laura Vanderkam, co-author of Genius Denied, How to Stop Wasting Our Brightest Minds. She wrote that with Jan and I and her husband, Michael. Uh, we also have with us tonight Dr. Andrew Thomas, director of the pre-college division at the Juilliard School. Um, we have some friends from Nevada here tonight. Uh, uh, we have the president of the University of Nevada, uh, John Lilly. Uh, and we'd like to announce uh, again, uh, we've announced it in Nevada, but not so much here, uh, that we're going to be pleased to open the Davidson Academy of Nevada uh, with Dr. Lilly on the University of Nevada campus uh, less than a year from now. This academy will be the first Profound, school for profoundly gifted students in the United States, and it's going to be a public school, free. <laughs> uh, there are some, several other people who have helped us, and uh, I don't know if they're here tonight or not, but we'd like to recognize them. Congressman Phil English and his wife, Chris. I don't know if they've made it here yet. Congressman Vic Snyder of Arkansas and Pat Ross, team leader of the Javits program in the United States Department of Education. Um, uh, right at this moment, I'd like to introduce uh, Colleen Harson, who's our Institute's Director of Services, and she has an announcement. Thank you, Bob. Dr. Julian Stanley, founder of the Center for Talented Youth at Johns Hopkins University, has attended all previous Davidson Fellows Award ceremonies. For those who knew him, his recent passing has meant the loss of a respected and beloved gentleman and scholar. For those who did not know him personally, his commitment to making a positive difference for exceptionally bright young people has left a lasting legacy in terms of creating educational opportunities and continuing the study of exceptional talent from which all of us will benefit. We dedicate this evening's event in remembrance of this remarkable man. Thank you. Bob. Thanks, Colleen. We're all going to miss uh, Dr. Stanley, that's for sure. Uh, next, I'd like to introduce my wife and co-founder of the Davidson Institute, Jan Davidson, who will join me to do the, tonight's work presenting the 2005 Davidson Fellows Awards. Yeah. Good evening. The Davidson the Fellows Award was established five years ago with two purposes, to recognize and reward and celebrate extraordinary achievements of young people, and to encourage and inspire these young people to give back in positive ways to our society. Each applicant outlines how his or her project could help better the lives of others, and you will hear tonight how significant these projects are and their architects and are to our future. 
months, and in many instances, years, have been dedicated to these projects. The selections were made by an independent team of judges with expertise in specific areas corresponding to five submission categories, mathematics, science, technology, humanities, and outside the box. This year's institute is recognizing four Davidson Fellow Laureates who each will receive $50,000 scholarships. Thirteen Davidson Fellows, five of whom will receive $25,000 scholarships, and eight who will receive $10,000 scholarships. Tonight, we will begin honoring this year's Davidson Fellows, who are each receiving the uh, $10,000 scholarships first. And I get to announce the first one. <laughs> Kadir Anamale, a 17-year-old ma man from Saratoga Springs, California. Kadir, would you please come forward and tell us about your science project? Okay. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Kadir Anomaly, and I'm from Saratoga, California, and I'm a freshman at Princeton University right now. Uh, for this scholarship, I undertook a project called The Growth of Germanium Nanowires Through the Vapor Liquid Solid Mechanism. And basically, what this project lies under the very new industry of nanotechnology, which has been building up speed during the past 10 years. Many people are excited about the potential that's, that, that all these circuits at such a small scale can actually hold. Now, interning at the NASA Ames Research Center, I was fortunate enough to have the ability to, to work in the nanotechnology lab at the research center itself. In order for any application of actual nanotechnology to work, they must have their foundation. And in the case of electronics, these are the actual nanowires. Now, you can imagine that creating wires at such a small scale, approximately two atoms wide, can be pretty hard, and that's where my project came in. My project was to optimize this growth process to make these wires as straight as possible so that they can be applied into, in, into future electronics and circuitry. Normally, wires at such small scales will, will want to mesh within each other, so I was able to use a specific chemical growth process, which, as I mentioned, is called the vapor liquid solid mechanism in order to make these wires grow as straight as possible and align with each other. And then so in order for any nano application to be actually made in the future, these wires must first be made. So hopefully off my work, scientists can further explore the potential uses of nano wires and nanotechnology in general. These ranges, this ranges from using nano robots or, or, or simply <laughs> a solar cell that is so small that it can be placed on any household appliance. Now, as the world grows smaller and smaller, technology must follow it, and nanotechnology is the next frontier that we've set out on. Now, it has been a, a fantastic opportunity for me to work in such a field at, at a high school age, and I would like to thank the Ames Research Center, my mentor, Laura Yi, and my parents for giving me this vital learning experience. I'd also like to thank the the David in, in Davidson Institute for providing me with this scholarship that will help me on my way to success and furthering my research. Thank you. Stephanie Hahn is a 17-year-old young woman from Fort Myers, Florida. Stephanie, come up and tell us about your work in science. I'm Stephanie Hahn. Um, I'm a freshman at Harvard. Um, my project was inspired by my firsthand experience with caring for my grandmother who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease in 2001. The project was the effects of intracerebral ventricular passive immunization on the deposition of beta amyloid. And 
This was based on scientific research that I had conducted at the Alzheimer's Disease Research Laboratory of the University of South Florida in Tampa. So basically, the project dealt with finding a more effective way to treat Alzheimer's disease. And treatments that are in use right now consist of pharmaceuticals, which only treat the symptoms of the disease and not the causes. In my project, I injected antibodies into a fluid-filled cavity of the brains of mice in order to clear the plaques which form in the brains of Alzheimer's disease patients. I found that I could successfully reduce these plaques without causing adverse side effects present after um, other methods of antibody administration. So, in short, that would theoretically reverse the effects of Alzheimer's disease. The antibodies that I used in my project are now being put into clinical trials, and various pharmaceutical companies are discussing the possibilities of funding this endeavor with the laboratory at USF. I would very much like to continue this area of research during my next years at, as a student at Harvard University, and this scholarship is greatly helping me to achieve that goal, as well as to continue my overall education. I would like to thank the Davidson Institute first and foremost, um, my parents, Dr. Glass, my mentor at school, Dr. Morgan and Dr. Gordon, the PIs at the laboratory, the rest of the Alzheimer's Disease Research Laboratory staff, and especially Dr. Donna Wilcock, my supervisor. And to my grandmother, I love her so much, and I thank her for her inspiration despite her many tribulations. Thank you. Benedict Huang is a 17-year-old young man from New York. Benedict, please come tell us about your science portfolio. Thank you, Mrs. Davidson. Um, the title of my project was Charged Particle Collisions and High Energy Nuclear Collisions, uh, Charged Particle Production, sorry. And it falls within the category of science and in particular the field of particle physics. Um, essentially, my project outlines the development of a new technique to, to determine the charged particle multiplicity uh, during high energy nuclear collisions. And um, this is uh, important because it's an essential step in studying quark gluon plasma, which is a new phase of matter that only existed during the first few seconds of the Big Bang. And by simplifying the handling of data in this area of particle physics, my technique uh, reduces intrinsic errors and promises to supplant previous techniques to analyze um, quark gluon plasma. And the reason why um, this is important is because research in this phase of matter is important, um, represents a most fundamental form of basic research uh, from, which, from which all other useful technology is derived. Um, I'm currently pursuing a degree in theoretical physics at uh, Harvard University, and I expect to continue research within the field of particle physics. Um, I hope to use the generous scholarship provided by the Davidson Institute to further my education. Um, in conclusion, I would like to thank my mentor, Prof Professor Thomas uh, K. Hammock of Stony Brook University, as well as uh, Dr. Lucinda Hammock for all their help, and along with my parents, who have always supported me along the way. Um, thank you. Lucas Moeller is a 17-year-old young man from Moscow. That's Moscow, Idaho. Uh, Luke, Lucas, please tell us uh, about what I think is a very fascinating science project. All right. Uh, thank you, Bob. And uh, I'm Lucas Moeller. I'm Moscow, Idaho, 17 years old. Uh, and my project was the static and dynamic analysis of Martian dust uh, and application to Mars exploration. And I think, as most people know, uh, we're trying to get to Mars now. Um, we're taking small steps, as we have been in the past, but uh, we're going on uh, to the moon, to Mars, and uh, the dust is going to play a major role in how we get there and what we do there. And uh, my project uses a small sphere to analyze the deposition of the dust on the sphere and look at what angle that dust is going to roll off. 
So if you have a sand pile, the dust is going to form a specific angle. And it's looking at the angle of the dust for uh, Mars dust. And this angle is important to anything we're going to send there. It's uh, specifically solar cells. Um, the dust is going to accumulate over time on these solar cells. And to minimize this deposition uh, over time, you could possibly uh, tilt these solar panels at the specific angle and maximize that power output from these solar panels. And uh, right now, I'm currently, or have been for the past four years now, working at the University of Idaho with Professor Marcus Tuller. Um, and we're trying to recreate the Martian environment inside a glove box so that we can see the real effects of the Martian environment on my experiment, see uh, the different effects of humidity, temperature, and the atmosphere of Mars on the angle uh, of the dust. Um, the scholarship is a great help for me. I mean, next year, wherever I choose to go, uh, will be a great help. I, I'm sure that uh, they realize this, and uh, <laughs> they uh, help out everyone, uh, all these profoundly gifted people in here. Uh, continue research, continue their development through life, and I'm grateful for that. Um, I'd also like to thank my parents, of course, for uh, putting me through all this, you know. Uh, <laughs> they've at least supported me in the past. And um, also my mentor, Kim Coleman, who's here tonight, and uh, my professor that I'm working with, Marcus Tuller. Uh, this scholarship and the Davidson Foundation is a great opportunity for anyone, really. Just get out there and grab an opportunity if you see it, and it'll take you far. Thank you. Ramesh Ramalil is a 17-year-old man, from, young man from Winter Springs, Florida. Nimish, please tell us about your Davidson Fellows Project. Good evening. I am Nimish Ramalal, and I attend Seminole High School in Sanford, Florida. And I did some research on quantum computing. Quantum computing holds a promise of reducing the computational power of, say, Google, with its hundreds of servers, into a single computer. Faster than anything currently imaginable, these quantum computers will do billions of years of calculations in days. This is not science fiction, and it is in fact happening at research institutions all over the world. The potential for this technology is unbounded, ranging from the military applications to commercial applications. For example, these computers will help us uncover drugs which can cure a wide variety of ailments, and military applications encode the breaking of cryptographic codes. My interest in this field began in eighth grade when I started to study self-replicating biological systems on a computer. Now this is uh, important because it can eventually help us create self-replicating nanobots which have a host of applications. However, what I unfortunately realized was that the conventional computers did not have the capacity to, to do this type of study. So I turned to quantum computers. Quantum computing will enable these innovations, but there are limitations to the technology, primarily programmability. Primary to 19, uh, previous to 1945, classical computers could not be programmed until von Neumann introduced memory. But programmability in quantum computers remained elusive. And I overcame this limitation by developing an architecture for quantum computers to store code in memory. Thus, my project is uh, titled Programmable Quantum Computing, a new framework with von Neumann type architecture. The research I have done would not have been possible without the support of my parents, my teachers, and my mentor, Professor Dan Marinowski of computer science at the University of Central Florida. But most of all, I would like to thank the Davidson Institute for their generous support in my continued education and research. Thank you.
So not only can they use computers, they can invent new ones. This is cool. <laughs> Tony Wu is a 17-year-old young man from Irvine, California. Tony, could you come up and explain your project to us? Hi, everyone. <clears throat> My technology project titled A Category-Oriented Web Search Engine Based on Round-Robin Learning and Ranking Algorithm. I designed a new and more efficient way <clears throat> to search the internet, to rank relevant websites, and to gather information. Using the complex round-robin learning and ranking algorithm, I indexed more than 40,000 web pages as training and testing data. And I used this information to calculate the optimal decision boundary and Euclidean distance for categorizing web pages. My new internet search method has implications in an information-based society that we are living today, including potential uses in tracking terrorists on the internet and for academic research. I plan to set up a large-scale web server so that the category-oriented search engine can be studied in more detail. Um, I would like, I plan on using this scholarship to further my education, pay for college, um, I'd like to thank my mother and my father for their inspiration and for their direction in my life. I'd also like to thank my nominators, Mrs. Heffernan, Mr. Tran, Professor McLeod, and Lee for their support. And most importantly, I'd also like to thank the Davidson Institute, as well as Bob and Jan, for their generosity. Thank you. Fan Yang is a 17-year-old young woman from Davis, California. Fan, please come and tell us about your fellow's science project. Thank you, Mrs. Davison. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, my name is Fan Yang, and I'm from Davis, California. My project title is Selection of Bacterial Adhesion Antagonists for Contact Lenses and Intraocular Lenses which focuses on pharmacy and microbiology using novel and powerful combinatorial chemistry techniques. In my research, I have found a way to reduce the risk of, of eye infection, of, of contact lens, um, of, of eye infection of, to, contact lens and, to contact lenses and intraocular lenses by identifying three compounds that possesses the antibacterial adhesion properties this project demonstrates the feasibility of compound grafted lens to prevent bacterial adhesion on bio and biofilm formation. In the future, anti-adhesion contact lenses and intraocular lenses could be developed to fight lens-induced infections. Moreover, the use of anti-adhesion therapy could be applied to eye, eye diseases and other healthcare problems. I am a freshman in college, and thanks to the Davidson Institution, I am able to use a scholarship to continue my, ed my education and research at Johns Hopkins University in Baltimore, Maryland, where I'm planning to explore nanotechnology, the manipulation of atoms and molecules, as a way to create long-term shield to bacteria and biofilm formation. In this special moment, I would like to thank my mentor, Dr. Xiaobing Wang, Dr. Joanne Suzuki, my biology teacher, Mr. Um, Ms. Uh, Mrs. Ann, Mrs. Ann Moriarty and Mr. Um, Mr. Wayne Raymond for the endless consultation, support, encouragement, and help throughout the project. I would also like to say thank you to Professor Joseph Liang and Kit Lam for providing Biofilm Laboratory and Compute Natural Chemistry Lab. At least I would like to say, at last, I would, li I would like to say thank you to my mother, Lucy Liu, my uncle, Sunny Yang, my auntie, Annette Hadre, for their understanding and support. And thank you all. You know, we have a requirement in this award that you have to be under the age of 18.
Mark Yu, a six-year-old from Monterey Park, California, qualified. Mark, come up and tell us about your music. I'm going to get you all set up here. Two steps for Mark. I would like to thank my mother, my teachers, my mentors, and those who are helping me pay for something whose importance is just below air, water, and food, my education. I would like to thank the Davidson Institute. Hmm. No one's clapping. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it is possible for a good kick to happen accidentally, but usually it happens because someone had a goal and a way to get to the goal. But kicks are not as complex as societies. A good society does not just accidentally happen. It does need a goal and a way to get there. The Davidson Institute is trying to make a good society. It is not just waiting for this to happen accidentally. It is not just talking about it. It is developing young people who will grow up to do well in philosophy, the arts, and the sciences. I am honored to be part of this plan. I am a musician. And I think art is a very important part of the good society. A philosopher, Miguel de Unamuno, tells us we used to take the streetcar to go to the opera. Then someone saw a way to improve the streetcar and get us to the opera more quickly. <laughs> <laughs> and as the streetcar was being improved, someone house had an even better idea, which caused other even better ideas. <laughs> and after a while, people forgot all about going to the opera. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we need better streetcars, but they need to go somewhere. That is not the good society. I want to change that. Thank you. Mark is known not only for his music capability, by the way, he qualified in piano but could have very easily qualified in cello. Um, Mark, now that he's been on the Leno show, thinks he's a bit of a comedian, don't you, Mark? So he's got some joke, he's got at least one joke for us, I know. There was a piece of string who went to a bar, and the bartender says, get out of here, we don't serve strings. So the string went home. He made a knot into a bowl and freezed out a few strands and went out, went out of the home and go back to the bar. And the bartender says, Say, are you the same piece of string who went here earlier? And then the string said, no, I am afraid not. Okay, thank you, Mark, for your joke. 
and for your very nice comments. Our, 20, our first $25,000 um, $25, Davidson Fellow awardee is Maya Cabeza, is a 13-year-old woman, young woman from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Maya, please come up and tell us about your music portfolio. Hello, my name is Maya Cabeza. My category is music as a classical instrumentalist, and my project title is Sharing Music with People Around the World. I was born in Japan of Argentinian parents, and I started violin in Toronto when I was four. Five years ago, I moved to Chapel Hill, North Carolina, where I live now with my parents. I am pursuing the dream of becoming a concert violinist. My goal is to use music as a, to communicate with people of different cultures. Music is a universal language that can cross cultural, language, and religious barriers. The last few years have been wonderful for me. I played 13 recitals with piano and small ensembles. I have also played as a soloist with four different orchestras. Two of these solar performances were awarded in concerto competitions. I have also won prizes in several competitions, including the Kiwanis Music Competition and the Sphinx Competition. Last year, I had the honor of receiving a lone violin from the Stradivari Society. And starting this month, I'm the concertmaster of the Triangle Youth Philharmonic. The most important components of my musical education are to master the violin technique and to become experienced as a soloist, orchestra member, and chamber music performer. This training requires not only an intense practice schedule, but also to receive lessons from teachers with experience in teaching concert violinists. To get this training, I travel periodically to New York to study with Patinka Kopek at the Manhattan School of Music. By covering part of the cost of this expensive education, the Davidson Fellowship will help my musical career tremendously. I would like to thank the Davidson Institute for awarding me a wonderful scholarship. I'm also grateful to Patinka Kopek, Hugh Partridge, Richard Louisby, and Matthias Tarnpolsky for nominating me. Finally, I thank my parents for their continuous encouragement and support. Thank you. Brett Harrison is a 17-year-old young man from Huntington Station, New York. Brett, uh, please come up and tell us about your, I think, pretty fascinating mathematics project. Good evening. Two tough acts to follow. <laughs> I'm Brett Harrison from Dix Hills, New York, and my Davidson Fellows project is entitled a proof of Seymour's conjecture for all oriented graphs in the area of mathematics. My project involved a mathematical object called a graph, which is a collection of vertices and edges, each edge connecting a pair of vertices. A graph is essentially dots and lines, each line connecting a pair of dots. If every edge is assigned a direction, it's called a directed graph. Well, in 1993, Professor Dr. Paul Seymour, professor at Princeton University, formulated a conjecture regarding directed graphs. I have developed a proof of this long-standing conjecture using a unique method that generalizes certain properties of a directed graph. Not only does my proof solve the conjecture, but it also strengthens the conjecture by proving a more exact statement than the conjecture itself. I would like to thank the Davidson Institute for awarding me this scholarship to be used towards my future education in mathematics and computer science. I thank the Davidson Institute for recognizing the achievements of talented youth in many areas and for their continued promotion of gifted education. In addition, my research would not have been possible without the care and support of several people. I would first and foremost like to thank my research mentor, Mrs. Chrissy Natskis, for providing me with the resources to research and for always encouraging me to take on any challenge and to pursue my dreams. I would like to extend my gratitude to my high school principal, Dr. James LaFreese, and my teacher, Dr. Lee Jacknow, for providing me with the opportunity to take extracurricular mathematics courses and to conduct my research. Last, but certainly not least, I would like to thank my parents for their undying love and support throughout my 17 years on Earth. Finally, I would like to congratulate the other Davidson Fellows for all of their outstanding accomplishments. Thank you all very much.
Dominic Mayukan is a 16-year-old young man from Bethesda, Maryland. Dominic, please tell us about your music portfolio. Well, I must say this room looks a lot bigger from up here. <laughs> I am Dominic Maikan. I'm a 16-year-old, exactly 10 years older than Mark. <laughs> I attend Churchill High School up in Bethesda, pretty close from here. And I also commute to New York City, New York, every Saturday to attend the Juilliard School of Music. And my project, obviously music, consisted of three pieces. My first one was a string orchestra piece entitled Sinfonietta for String Orchestra, and that was dedicated to the victims of September 11, as well as their families. My second piece was a cycle of five songs based on poetry by James Joyce. And my final piece was a piano solo piece titled D'une monde à l'autre. In French, that means from one world to the other. And that was commissioned by the Dumbarton Society last year and was premiered March 19th of this year. I hope that in the near future, I can be fortunate enough to find additional mentors and teachers such as the ones I have now as well as keeping the ones I have now. <laughs> um, to begin, I must state my parents, who are both musicians. They prodded me in the beginning and taught me how to prod myself. And then there is Dr. Andrew Thomas from the Juilliard School of Music. He is the director of the Cree College Division, as well as my orchestration teacher. And I'm very glad to have him as a teacher. My second teacher is Mr. Ira Taxon, also from the Juilliard School of Music, and he's my composition teacher. And finally, I have a great piano teacher as well as an amazing mentor, Mrs. Olenia Fuski. And all these teachers have helped me to form my music so it is applied to the real world. And in the real world, it's really diverse. Everyone listens to different kind of music. And music isn't just a pastime, something that you can listen to in the background while you're doing something else, but it's also a driving force in our society, and people are able to be inspired by it and use it for all sorts of achievements. So I hope my music can be used in that sense. There is something that everyone tells me, and that's that I have a long future ahead of me and that I should go with it. But I don't particularly agree with that. In order to have a good future, it takes a lot of early planning. And that's where amazing opportunities such as the Juilliard School of Music come in. And another great opportunity is the Davidson Foundation. And I'm very grateful to their amazing contribution. Thank you. Uh, Justin Solomon is a young man from Oakton, Virginia. Uh, Justin, please come up and tell us about your fellow's technology project. Thank you all so much. I'm really honored to receive the Davidson Fellows Award this evening and am humbled to be in the midst of such experienced and knowledgeable peers and mentors. So to do things a little bit backward, of the many people that I would like to thank this evening, I would especially like to thank the Davidson Institute for their kind generosity. But there's another reason that I also have to thank them. A number of years ago, my family purchased our new snazzy new, uh, 386 DOS computer. None of us were quite sure what to do with it. So we returned to the store for some advice. Spotting me in the family entourage, the clerk recommended a state-of-the-art educational program on this <laughs> Five and a half inch floppy disk. <laughs> Math Blaster Plus, copyright Davidson, 1987. The year in which I was born, by the way. <laughs> I spent many hours playing this game, 
chasing an astronaut back and forth to solve progressively more difficult math problems, which ultimately re rewarded me with a, more co with a colorful spaceship launch. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that this very software launched my career of studying complex algorithms. This fascination with math and computer programming led me to the project I submitted to Davidson, Davidson entitled Identification of Differential Surface Properties on a Triangle Mesh for Facial and Object Recognition, in which I developed and implemented a new system for facial and object recognition that processes the shape of a person's face or of an object. Hopefully, once my work has been refined, we will no longer rely on simple photographs of faces for security and personalization, but rather on the actual geometry of a face. The Davidson Scholarship will give me the opportunity to pursue this goal of a further edu education and research at the university level and beyond. I would like to thank several people for their support during the development of my project. From school, I would like to thank Mr. Joshua Strong, my computer science teacher, for his ideas and continued supports, as well as Dr. John Dell, my physics teacher, for reviewing my paper and giving invaluable advice. I would like to thank Dr. Mark Livingston from the Naval Research Labs and here in Washington, D.C., and Dr. Zoran Durek from George Mason University for mentoring me through the research project. And finally, I would like to thank my family for their patience and encouragement. I am honored to receive this award and to have worked under the supervision and support of such outstanding teachers and scientists. Thanks. I wish all those students had done so well that played Math Blaster. John Zoe is a 17-year-old young man from Northville, Michigan. John, please come up and tell us about your science project. I'm kind of jealous. I wish I'd played Math Blaster when I was younger. <laughs> well, hi all. My name is John Zoe, and I am a high school senior from Michigan. First off, let me say what a privilege it is to be able to speak before so many talented and dedicated people in this room tonight. I'm here because of my project entitled A Study of Possible Interactions Among Rev1, Rev3, and Rev7 Proteins from Saccharomyces cerevisiae, an investigation which was in the science and biology fields. I looked at how proteins from yeast cells may work together to replicate damaged DNA. My results suggest a new model of DNA replication across genomic mutations. The conclusion was significant in that enhancing or, suppress, or, or suppressing the protein functions may prove important in cancer and other mutation treatments. An obvious point of future research then could be to quantify the effects of the proteins on uh, certain types of cancers. Um, as for my personal future, I hope to finish off college applications soon and eventually, <laughs> yeah, and eventually pursue a career in biotech to combat cancer, AIDS, and other debilitating diseases. With college tuition skyrocketing, I feel highly confident that the scholarship provided by the Davidson Institute will be put to good use paying the bills and allowing me to continue learning in college as opposed to having me drop out. <laughs> Um, well, now to the thank yous. I'll start with the most obvious two people, my parents. They may not have provided the scientific guidance, but their unconditional support, love, and encouragement were even more vital. I know that I should probably say this more often, but I love you very much, Mom and Dad. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Um, next, I would like to thank my mentor and nominator, Dr. Xiang Zong, my biology teacher, Dr. Fazio, and Professor Glenn Walker, also one of the nominators. One last hurrah goes to the Davidson Institute, <laughs> the founders Bob and Jan Davidson, and the many other individuals, such as Mrs. Tacey Mosner, who communicate with all of us behind the organization. And without them, this wonderful opportunity would not have been possible. Their charitable cause of developing talented children is so important and thanks for making such a positive impact.
Four of tonight's recipients will be recognized as Davidson Fellow Laureates, a, a title which happens to be accompanied by a $50,000 scholarship. Our first laureate is Karsten Gimry, a 12-year-old young man from Banks, Oregon. Karsten, come up and tell us about your music project. Um, philosopher Suzanne K. Langer wrote that uh, music can reveal the nature of feeling with the detail and truth that language cannot approach. I feel it is the responsibility of the performing artist to bring the written page to life and in doing so further the listening experience as described by Billy Joel to be the explosive expression of humanity. This is a human condition which is common to us all. Western classical music is rich in passion and meaning and I hope my piano performance, in this case, Conversation Without Words, was able to communicate that. I enjoyed working on this project as it enabled me to bring music to an audience that might not have otherwise been exposed to it. For example, one of the concerts I gave was in a small coastal town in Oregon, which offers few live performances of classical music. It was a benefit concert that helped raise money for renovations of a community arts center. Fishermen, loggers, farmers, doctors, and business people attended, uh, proving that classical music it, it does not belong solely to the musically literate. It is an honor to be chosen to be part of this distinguished group of Davidson Fellows. This scholarship will enable me to continue my musical endeavors as well as complete my undergraduate studies at Pacific University where I, plan to, uh, where I am majoring in math and physics. I plan, to make, uh, I plan to pursue graduate studies and hope to make contributions to society in both these areas someday. I would like to thank my piano instructors, Paula Watt, whom I, had, whom, whom I have studied with since the age of four, Mark Silverman of the Manhattan School of Music, Carol Rich of Portland, Oregon, and Peter Mack in Seattle. I also thank my parents and my sister for their support, and I thank the Davidson Institute. Thank you. Those college kids are getting younger every year. <laughs> okay. Heidi Kalusti, Kalustian is a 17-year-old young woman from Canton, Michigan. Heidi, please tell us about your fellows program, or fellows literature project. My name is Heidi Kalushtin and I'm a Davidson Fellows Laureate in Literature. My portfolio is titled The Roots of All Things and it's a collection of poetry, essays, and fiction. Each piece in the portfolio explores the intertwining themes of universal, social, and individual perspectives by drawing connections between the tree trunk, tree trunk of personal identity to family, heritage, culture, and humanity. By blending the roots of these thematic levels in every piece, the portfolio illustrates the complex inter interconnections and undercurrents beneath the surface of our lives. The Davidson Fellows Award has enabled me to continue to grow as a writer at the University of Michigan, where I'm studying as an English major with a concentration in creative writing. This acknowledgement has not only aided my education financially, but it is also a great honor that will help me achieve recognition and even greater pursuits as I continue in my career in graduate school and eventually in the process of publishing. Many people who encouraged and tutored me throughout the four-year process that yielded the roots of all things have nurtured the creation of this portfolio. First, I would like to thank the Plymouth Canton Educational Part English Department, including Ms. Kathleen Churchill and Mr. Brian Reed, who challenged me and gave me the tools to express myself through writing. I would also like to thanks, thank Interlac and Arts Camp, where I spent a summer building my portfolio in an intense creative writing workshop with Mr. Nicholas Harp. I'm so grateful for the education I've been given and these teachers who guided me through each step of the growing process. Finally, I would like to thank my parents, Lynn and Steve Kalushton. They instilled in me a passion for books and gave me the freedom, love, and support that encouraged me to pursue my dreams. Also, to the Davidsons, I can't thank you enough. You've changed my life.
Tiffany Coe is a 16-year-old young lady from Terre Haute, Indiana. Tiffany, please come up and tell us about your fellow's technology portfolio. Whoa, it does look bigger. <laughs> uh, good evening. Um, my name is Tiffany Coe, and I'm currently a freshman at Princeton University. And um, it's my greatest honor to stand here in front of you guys and receive this uh, Davidson Fellow Laureate Award. Um, when, as a child, um, I always enjoyed drawing and designing, and when uh, my mentor, Dr. Song, introduced me to electrical engineering, um, inspired by a childhood break-in into my house, and also um, my ever interest in engineering and designing, um, I designed a security system to protect people and property. And my project in the technology category is titled um, Designing a Capacitance-Based Security System. Um, what I did was I designed and constructed a new and innovative security system um, that's able to uh, uh, monitor the movements of a potential intruder without the use of expensive surveillance equipment. And not only can you use this as, say, a security device, but you can also use it to monitor just like the regular occupants of a house um, to ensure the safety of, say, younger or more elderly individuals of the family. So uh, now I pull out the long list of thank you notes. Um, my project would never never been uh, such a success without um, the encouragement of the next list of people. Um, first of all, my parents, um, Frank Ko and Karen Liu, for their love and guidance. Um, my professor and mentor, Dr. Zhang Zhang Song, um, who did come to support me today. Um, I'm not sure, I can't see where he is. But um, for being such a great mentor and giving me the knowledge and skills that I needed to finish this project, and Dr. Keith Hoover for reviewing my project and giving me helpful and, and constructive comments. In addition, I'd like to thank my middle school science and math teachers, um, Mrs. Carol Tolan and Mr. Fisher, um, who always encouraged and nurtured my love of science and math and brought me to where I am today. And also, a huge thank you to my school corporation and my high school, um, Terre Haute South Vigo, um, the principal, Mr. Freeze, and the vice principal, um, who also, to show such great support, um, made it out here to Washington, D.C. today. Um, and um, last but definitely not least, the Davidson Foundation for giving me the opportunity to share my work and for encouraging the youth of the world to nurture their talents and follow their dreams. So thank you very much. Tonight, our final Davidson Fellow Laureate is Milana Zarova, who is a 17-year-old young, young lady from uh, Fresh Meadows, New York. Milana, please tell us about your science project. Thank you, Dan. Wow, I had a feeling I was going to go last. My last name does start with a Z. So. <laughs> Uh, but before I start, I'd like to say that I wrote this speech about a month ago in preparation for the ceremony, and I would be kidding myself if I said that I could read this speech and feel the exact same feelings that I felt a month ago. After coming here and meeting every single fellow from the Davidson Institute, I feel re-inspired. I don't think that I can just read my speech, but don't worry, I'll tell you why they're giving $50,000. I mean, I'll tell you about my, my research and everything. But after that, I do want to have a special note to the fellows, which I feel they really do deserve. Um, well, the title of my project is called Gene Therapy Meets Chemotherapy, Exposure of Malignant Glioma Cells to Transgenic Embryonic Stem Cells and Temozolomide. That's a mouthful, I know, but it means much more than that to those suffering from malignant glioma, the deadliest form of brain cancer the most malignant type, which after chemotherapy, radical surgery, and radiation still reoccurs and is basically almost a death sentence for those who receive it. So after three summers of working with a neurosurgeon, Dr. Germano, and watching her meet these patients uh, before the surgeries, watching them during their surgeries, yes, as their brains were being cut open, and then after the surgeries, meeting with them post-operation to see how they were following up, it broke my heart to know that they were going to die in a year. And what could I do as a 16-year-old standing in the operating room, kind of twiddling my thumbs around, just watching? 
The only thing that a 16-year-old could possibly do in that situation in order to help, I guess, would have been to research the situation and see what kinds of therapies exist. And aside from chemotherapy, there was one therapy lurking that is a bit controversial, especially within the legislative branch at this moment, and that is stem cell research and gene therapy. In my research, by combining this stem cell research and gene therapy, the new approach, with chemotherapy, the more conventional approach, I was able to find that the tumor cells that were killing these malignant glioma patients can be synergistically increased in the amount of death that you see in the tumor cells if you combine the two approaches, chemotherapy and gene therapy. And this can mean so many promising things in the form of multidisciplinary treatments for brain cancer and cancer altogether. Um, now, this study would not have been possible without several people in my life. Um, and this I must go through a list, just like everyone else. Um, my family comes first always, because without them, I would never have had the inspiration. They put up with my qualms every single day, with um, everything that I come to them with. I, they are my pillars. Um, aside from my parents are also some amazing teachers that have changed my life. Um, my honors biology teacher from high school, uh, who's my mentor and like second mother, uh, Dr. Susan Browman, who's here today, and it means so much to me that she came. She never misses a day of class, and she came here. Um, I am so honored to have you here. Um, if it wasn't for you, I would not have been able to do any of this research. Um, also, to the neurosurgeon that I worked with, Dr. Isabel Germano, I'd like to offer a great thanks, and to the mentors, Dr. Mahmoud Uzaman and um, Ronald Bedvenisti, that helped me through my research. And last but not least, obviously, to everyone that works with the Davidson Fellows, um, starting with Jen. Uh, Jen and Bob, who are the founders of this organization, uh, to everyone that works the task force that makes this possible, makes all these events work. Um, it's just incredible what you guys do, and to be standing here is an honor that I can't even begin to put into words. So, as I said, the people that I mentioned before were those that inspired me to do my research. But as I stand here today, I feel re-inspired to say something else by the people that sit before me right here. Um, we all came here today not just to get our awards and our plaques, but also to visit with Bob and Dan the legislative branch of our country and to see if we can make a difference, to actually come here for a purpose. And the mere fact that every single one of you is here today shows that you guys are supporting that purpose by being here. And that means a lot to not just Jen and Bob, obviously, but to us as the future leaders of our, of our nation. And if we can be involved in the process, that changes our laws and makes the educational system better. That already says something for how, this, how we uh, will impact the future. I feel that being here today, we're supporting a cause greater than just the Davidson Fellowships that are being offered. We're supporting a cause that promotes education, that prioritizes education, and that, in the end, will be what leads our nation to progress. So, I think that about, about covers everything that I didn't have in my, in my speech originally. But um, I mean, I, I guess what in the future is, I'm, I'm currently a freshman, uh, just like two others, at Princeton University. Um, I plan to be a pre-med student, uh, go to med school, but with concentrations in Spanish and neuroscience. So uh, <laughs> uh, we'll see which one triumphs in the end, but med school is a definite. Um, uh, finding a cure for cancer, I think, would be important to our society. So, and hopefully, you know, with the help of uh, Jen and Bob, who apparently come up with these ideas over dinner, as I found out yesterday. <laughs> um, keep eating dinner so that, you know, we, we get these more. So thank you so much, all of you, for being here. I think that um, who deserves more of a round of applause is first everyone here and Jen and Bob. So. She's also a TV star, if you hadn't noticed. Is this my turn now? I guess yeah, it's your turn. It's my turn. Well, I'm very proud of all these fellows, and I'm sure all of you are. Uh, but I want you to realize that it, these, as ambitious and as intelligent as they are, you must have noticed a few things about these young fellows, um, that they had lots of nurturing. They had parents who supported them and encouraged them and made sacrifices for them, lots of sacrifices, lots of personal sacrifices, lots of driving to get them to their labs and their music lessons and so on and so forth. 
and they had mentors, wonderful mentors. They came from all over the country here. Let's give the mentors and the parents a big hand. Talent needs to be nurtured, and that's what we spent our time on the Hill trying to do today, is to encourage everyone in the, in the Congress that talent needs to be nurtured and that better educational systems that focus on the high ability.